This talk is based on a body of work by small tourism dependent communities in the Northwest. They're, they're forging unexpected and rather unusual new collaborations to both energize their economies and combat climate change, kind of a mutual benefit. Um, many of the people I've met who are uh, involved in this work and those who are involved are excitedly involved and passionate about this work. They just love to recall the aha moment that they had that got them involved and passionate. Usually a brainstorming session where they first recognize the potential for their community in the convergence of three things. Those three things are clean energy, electric vehicles, and uh, having really good times, basically. Getaways, holidays, vacations. And, and by clean energy, I mean clean power that's produced locally and that is uh, either sun or wind or it's energy that's produced by moving water, hydro. Electric vehicles, also known as EVs, um, that are fast, they're smart, and they're very fun to drive. They are very way cool to drive. And then also unforgettable vacations and uh, weekend getaways and holidays. Those three things. So these communities are crafting ways to package travel in electric cars with clean energy and with unique and surprising and engaging activities. Their primary goal is to freshen the appeal that they have as friendly and exciting visitor destinations. I call the sum of all these efforts electric vehicle tourism. Before going further though, I want to make two points about these communities. There's one thing they all have in common. Each one of these communities is somewhat near or adjacent to within a hundred mile range or so or 150 mile range of a metropolitan area that's become a center for the introduction and deployment of electric vehicles. So they got electric concentrations of electric vehicles relatively close. The second thing that they share uh, is that they're all models one way or another um, that can be tailored, scaled, and adopted by other communities wherever they are so long as they're also near uh, uh, an EV concentration area, another deployment area. Um, so they're, they're great models for other communities in the Northwest and beyond. So we ask ourselves, well, what's the relevance of this? And if climate change is something uh, that you're concerned with, we should recognize that 48%, almost half of all the greenhouse gases that we produce in Washington state come from burning gas and diesel in our cars and trucks from transportation. So if we're really serious about reducing climate change, we need to address that contribution. We need to start choosing to drive vehicles that don't burn fossil fuels. Now we have a very exceptional opportunity in Washington state and really in much of the Northwest, but in Washington state over 70% of all the electricity that we produce is generated by clean hydro and wind and solar are coming on board and they're coming on board rather quickly as well. We're world leaders in generating clean electricity. World leaders in generating clean electricity. And we can use those green electrons to power our cars, to fuel our vehicles. We can and we probably should drive electric. It, it just makes sense especially here in Washington and especially in the Northwest. And I believe that EV tourism can help make that transition. We'll talk about that. Um. <laughs> okay. <laughs> ah, the technology, that's what we're talking about here today. Oh, okay, we've got it. All right. Uh, an early innovator in, uh, in EV tourism, if you will, is North Central Washington, where I live. Communities in the area organized a consortium to pursue uh, electric vehicle opportunities back in 2005. And since its formation, coalition members have converted over a dozen vehicles into EVs 
for local fleets. They've briefed members of Congress and the state legislature, staged exhibits in dozens of uh, parades and conferences and uh, various events. Um, now the coalition is pursuing EV tourism. And this past June, uh, we celebrated the launch of the USA's first national scenic byway to become electric vehicle ready. After years of uh, working on the effort with multiple parties and a dozen, a dozen electric vehicle stations were activated along the Stevens Pass Greenway. It's 100 miles long, a stretch of US-2 between Seattle and Wenatchee. Uh, the immediate objective of the project was to extend the driving range for Seattle's growing number of EV owners. The charge stations allow them to fuel up and route to destinations in north central Washington, which is a major destination for folks in the Seattle area. We see two to three million visitors a year. It's a big part of our economy. The event itself was spirited. There was music, food, ribbon cuttings, children everywhere, uh, electric vehicle demonstrations, and there was a sense of history making in, in, in the air about the, the moods, uh, about the world's first EV-friendly tourism corridor. That photo is, uh, <laughs> I'm having a little problem with this. Um, the immediate objective of the project was to extend the driving range for Seattle's uh, growing number of EV own owners. The event itself, uh, the articles, I'm sorry, the articles in discussion about the electrified corridor continue to circulate widely. You're looking at one here, especially among businesses and organizations serving the local tourism industry. Excitement about the project um, has inspired destination communities from a Soyuz, British Columbia, Um, <laughs> to the San Juan Islands to pursue EV tourism and to explore collaborations with us. With more voices and information contributing to the region's vision, our strategy has evolved. We want to do more now than just attract current EV owners to, uh, to come to our area. What we're interested in now is uh, attracting anyone who is at all curious about EVs. The idea is to package cars, tours, demonstrations and workshops, and special events, and then market them to people who just want to learn about EVs, to try before they buy, or to simply enjoy an EV driving experience in a relaxed, scenic, and fun setting. And we're not limiting the focus to just cars. We think visitors will be very interested in experiencing a whole new class of electrified specialty vehicles, and I'll share more on that later. When we first started brainstorming these strategies, we thought we were the first to marry EV know-how with tourism. We really thought we were clever at the time. It wasn't long before we were humbled, and we learned that, in fact, dynamic examples of EV tourism are showing up in EV deployment centers around the globe. Places like Oregon's Willamette Valley, Okinawa, Okinawa uh, Slovenia, Indonesia, Wales. Um, I know there's at least 15 places in the world where EV tourism is starting to bubble up. It's very early in the life of EV tourism. Some say that electric cars themselves you know, have just achieved puberty. So if tourism is based on the electric car, of course, uh, we've got a ways to go yet. So it's very early on. We've got a lot of growing up to do. And it'll likely change significantly in the years ahead. But we do have enough examples out there right now to inform the design of a prototype EV tourism road trip. So I'm asking you along to join me on an imaginary uh, electrified adventure here. First, a disclaimer, though. You won't be able to duplicate this trip tomorrow, at least not all of it, not in any one place. But it's coming. The trip's features are inspired by real-world examples and emerging technologies from around the planet. Let's plan on a party of about 8 to 12, and we're going to carpool up. We'll take four vehicles so everyone can pair off to do their own thing. With 25 models of electric cars currently available, we have some choices to make. So here's what I suggest. We're going to take 
two all-electric cars, a couple of all-electric cars, and a couple of plug-in hybrids. One of the electric cars will be that fast 250-mile range sporty little job, um, and the other will be a compact with a 100-mile range. We're going to get a feel for these. Both of the plug-in hybrids, uh, plug hybrids have a 40-mile range, so they run on their battery pack for 40 miles. Thereafter, the biodiesel engine takes over and extends their range. Uh, one of those vehicles, one of those plug-in hybrids is going to be a truck because we're going up to vacation country here and uh, we want to be able to take our skis and our equipment, our bicycles and so on. So we'll put that stuff in the truck. We can either rent the cars from uh, an agency or we can uh, go online and rent them from EV owners through a car share program. So no problem getting hold of the cars. By the way, all these cars are like iPads on wheels. So they've got big screen monitors, internet capability, Bluetooth, so we can stay in touch as we go along, change our plans as we go, and so on. Now it's about 130 miles to get to our destination. So uh, the 100 mile electric range cars are going to have to stop once or twice to charge along the way. Um, so they'll be charging, the plug-in hybrid drivers won't have to stop and charge, but if they do, they'll get much better mileage overall for the trip, so they probably will. The 250-mile uh, all-electric luxury car, they could wait until we get to the destination, but uh, I know enough of these guys, and they'll take any charging opportunity that they can along the way. There's over a dozen well-spaced uh, well charging stations uh, along this route, so range anxiety is a non-issue. They're easy to find with a smartphone app or with a navigational system uh, that's built right into the car. And the directional signing from the highway is really clear and hard to miss. By the way, it's going to cost from $1 to $5 for a charge if there's any charge at all. A lot of the charge stations are, are free. So you can use some of the money you're not going to be spending on gas to buy a cup of coffee or go to lunch. Most of the communities that host charging stations have a list of things to do while charging. So uh, we're good to go there. Um, it might be fun to track our carbon footprint on this trip. So uh, let's, uh, let's do that. There's plenty of apps we can do that with. Um, we'll have relatively small footprints since all of the charging that we're going to do is going to be from uh, systems that are powered by solar, wind, or hydro. So a pretty clean, pretty clean vacation trip. Um, and then once we get to where we're going, once we get to the destination, and we'll probably just spend the night at the hotel, but the next day, after our cars have been charged at the hotel, we're not going to have any problem charging up at all the destinations in the area because the wineries, the parks, uh, the casinos, um, a lot of the restaurants, the downtown shopping districts, they've all installed charging uh, stations. So we're going to be charging up while we're playing around. That's the way these go. Um, now, you can download uh, an app uh, for EV touring in the region. And it's got all the information about special activities and events that have made the place such a popular destination for EV drivers. <laughs> There's a, an electric vehicle rally in, uh, in one of the town towns every month. There's an EV 101 workshop that's hosted by the community college. And uh, one of the favorites is at the local Speedway. You can get into an electric sports car. And if you have never experienced G-forces in your life, this would be the place to do it because you can go from zero to 60 in about four seconds. When I did it, I thought I would pass out. You could literally feel the blood moving to the back of your head. It was, uh, it was joyful. Um, you can also tour around uh, the trails and back roads on quiet running electric snowmobiles, um, motorcycles, uh, ATVs, and you can even take a, a bike tour a uh, winery bike tour uh, around the lake. And just so you know, I talked about this EV road trip being somewhat fantastical. Every one of these vehicles that we're looking at is actually an electric vehicle that's, uh, that you could, you could access today. 
So these are all real and they're happening. In addition, other options, you could have a 30 minute flyover with one of the new sports planes over the valley. It's beautiful, it's apple blossom time. Um, or you could take a uh, dinner cruise in a uh, solar powered, grid powered catamaran. Um, and then there's also the quiet running jet ski that you can take out on the river. One of the must-do activities, however, is to uh, hop on one of the electric shuttles that's coming up soon. It's a great way to tour around a few of the towns. That's the green bus there. The transit uh, drivers are very well informed and they love to talk about their 800 volt charging station. And when you get on that bus, you will be amazed at how quiet it is and you'll smell no diesel fumes, whether you're in it or you're following the shuttle through town. If we want to spend an evening checking out the uh, area's brew pubs, we can call the electric taxi to get around. One final thing to consider on this EV road trip. Uh, if you're into farming or gardening or low impact food, check out the farmers markets where you're going to see demonstrations of electric tractors and some electric orchard equipment that they're just, tent, uh, just testing out and uh, hope to be producing in the area pretty soon. Well, I hope these experiences that I've described to you um, appeal to you and that you think that they might appeal to others. And, and here's why it matters in the big picture. As I said earlier, we can drive electric and dramatically reduce our region's single greatest source of greenhouse gases. Many have already made the transition to electric cars, but the rate of adoption of EVs has lagged behind expectations. Some say the buzz is gone. I hope you agree that EV tourism could put some sizzle back into the public's understanding and perception of EVs. If done with some flair, fully engaged communities can become entertaining, informative, and interactive showcases for EV technologies and spin-offs. They'll introduce more of our fellow citizens to EV experiences, and that's likely to increase EV adoption and accelerate our transition from fossil fuels to clean electrons. We'll make a positive impact on climate change. In addition, EV tourism promises to multiple benefits for communities that fully engage in its development and execution. It'll attract EV owners and add new fresh attractions for the general public, benefiting the local businesses and the tourism sector. A proliferation of charging stations will not only serve EV driving visitors, but it'll also encourage local citizens to buy EVs to the delight of local dealerships, and it will also help convince rental car agencies that they should put some of their EVs in the local franchise operations. And more EVs on the road mean fewer dollars leak out of the area for gas purchases, leaving more money in the local economy. Some communities may even become centers of innovation for specialty vehicles, like some of the vehicles we saw on the screen. And young people are really excited about EVs. They can be involved at every age level, from building electric go-karts and bicycles to community college level training. What a hands-on way to make math and science cool and meaningful. Thank you.